have that in Cleveland. And in spite of the fact that you've maintained democracy and not sacrificed it because you had a period of fiscal difficulty, your schools in many ways outperform those in Cleveland. We sure do. That's right. Outperform them. And have not only a balanced budget, but have a, a surplus, a budgetary surplus. Now, another reason why I'm very skeptical, and I think you all should be skeptical, about the information concerning the viability of your city, is that, as you will recall and some of the others will recall, before the, when the argument was made to merge the library system, we had a similar argument proposed to us that if we were not a, if we did not merge with the county system, that by the year 2012 we would be over $800,000 in deficit, yes, and that we would not even be able to open our doors come 2013. Correct. Now we have had zero dollars of grant funding since then, and not only were we able to open our doors in 2013 and 2014, but we ended 2014 with almost one million dollar no. surplus. And that's without a lot of that money, and that's with a lot of infighting. <laughs> they wanted the library, and actually, one of the critical things about saving the library is that in the, in the uh, Baldwin-Wallace Community Research Institute study, feasibility study that said we were not viable, they said that the merger of the library will provide a model for other merger opportunities of municipalities and other things. So that was the test case. Let us see if we can take from these black people their library. And if they go for that, then let us go for the municipality. But we stopped that. And not only did we stop that, we defeated the logic of the merger, that we could not remain viable and remain independent. That's not the choice that you have. Your choice is not collapse or surrender. You can maintain your institution and pro improve your institutions. And one of the other issues besides the loss of the library, which you would lose, and it's not just the services. When the children come into the library and see an all black board of trustees, when they go into the school system and see elected people who look like them running their schools, a superintendent that looks like them running their schools, the impact that that has psychologically on every black child in that community is immeasurable. Merger sends the message that black people are incapable of managing anything of consequence. I know you're right. That's the fundamental thing. That's what it's saying. We was better off when we were segregated. Well, see, here we have a, an opportunity. Because one of the things that was mentioned is that, you know, we, we have a 95% roughly black community. And the issue of political representation was mentioned. And one of the things that we have with respect to our council Every person in East Cleveland, not only do you have five council people, but every resident votes for the majority of the council. You have one ward council person that you vote for and two at large. So you vote. Every resident votes for the majority of the council people. Cleveland has a formula for how they determine how many council people there will be. It's one per 25,000. One per 25,000. Now, you have 17,843 people in this roughly 3.2 square miles. You don't even have a whole council person, right? You don't even have a whole council person according to the Cleveland formula. That's right, because they don't let it fall beneath 22,000. They fall beneath 22,000. And they eliminate the That's how you got the Jeff Johnson versus, uh, what's his other, what's the other guy? Eugene Miller. Eugene Miller. That's how, you get, that's how you got that, because they had to make their adjustment and there was an agreement behind closed doors for uh, Eugene Miller and, and, and the president of council. But because the gentlemen stood together with some other people, uh, you, got, you got a positive outcome. Absolutely. And there's no guarantee that you would maintain even the existing level of representation because as their population declines, they may have to do that again. So then there may be even less. There may be even less. And so one of the things that Maxwell mentioned, which when we fought the library campaign, we said not only can we stay independent, but we can become a black arts, cultural, and intellectual hub, unlike anything that exists in the region. And we've delivered on part of that promise. We intend to deliver fully on that promise going forward. But one of the things that we have here that we can have that Harlem never had, Harlem in the height of the black renaissance was policed by the NYPD. They had the New York City City Council. They did not have the political power or the control of property. The black people in Harlem did not own the share of land in Harlem that the black people of East Cleveland owned. Here. So not only do you have ownership of land, not just individually, but the land bank, the city is a major landholder. You would be surrendering. 
you would be surrendering what the people in Harlem would have died for, for promises, for promises from people who have failed to keep the promises that they've made to you so far. Now, not only that, the issue of the police, as all of you will recall, because no one could forget, not so long ago, 60-car police chase into our city by the Cleveland police. 13 white police officers find 137 shots at two unarmed and defenseless black people in our middle school park. In the middle school park. Do you think they would have done that if they had driven into Cleveland Heights? No. no. They would not. East Cleveland didn't run about. They exactly. should have the case over. They should have took the case over. No, I agree. They they took the case case I agree. But the question becomes now, if you merge, do you want those police who fired no, 137 no, shots gonna be a problem. in our city? Right. Do we Everybody want the police that shot 12-year-old Tamir Rice no. being our police? Mm -hmm. Or my little brother-in-law who was 17 when he was gunned down by the Cleveland police, shot in the back mm -hmm. six times, stole his vehicle was a weapon. 15-year-old Brandon McLeod shot 10 times in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, I remember McLeod yeah. shot in his bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Now contrast that to what you have here. And look at your demographic. Higher rate of poverty, right? 95% black, almost a decade since the last police shooting where someone was killed. And before that, almost a decade before the, the previous one. And also, what happens when police do discharge their weapons in East Cleveland? As did happen a few years ago. Two police officers right. discharged their weapons. Both of those officers off the force. Not years later. Right immediately. There you go. So you have a capacity to hold the police accountable here in your 3.2 square miles. You have more self-determination than any black community since Reconstruction. That's a loss if you lose that. Hold on to that. You've held on so far. Hold the line just one more bit. You know, <laughs> We've come this far just one more inch. The development is coming. Whether you merge or not, the developers have said that. And we have very many assets here. So do not surrender what you have. Defend what you have and advance on what you have. Thank you very much. This is now. And we have one of the most beautiful theaters in there. Don't we, right? And that was done by uh, volunteers, the November, the November family. That was part of it. There was a grant writer who raised those funds while Reese was the director. Raised millions of dollars. Right. And so as you know, we did get some uh, grant money. Yes, that was prior to the deficit situation. Right. So our people have to fight. We just can't give them. Absolutely. Money. And they Thank want you. that line, right? They want that auditorium. And I was at the Schaumburg in Harlem not long ago. Yeah. Our auditorium better than the Schaumburg. I know it is. <laughs> it's better. So don't surrender it. Hold on to it. Thank you, All right, thank you, Mr. Bryant, and, and thank you, Dr. Pittman. Can you just say, I mean, we have the email address. I mean, obviously, if you want to get in touch with us, we want to be able to start building our sort of contact list and so that when we, you know, come across information that we want to share or make available to you, you know, if we have your contact information, we can do so. So, you know, Would you please, want us to sign a list or something? Sure, you can, or you can give, it, give it to me before yeah. you leave. Right or give it to Devin, just so that we can also stay in contact with you, uh, make sure that you get information as it is sort of disseminated, because that is the whole goal, is to elevate the public discourse. It okay. is to provide so, information. Uh -huh. So if we get a list and sign, because some of the seniors might not have email, but they got an address and everything, mm -hmm. and you might want to send whatever. Yeah. And, okay. that's, and that is critical, because Mansell, at the beginning of the meeting, everyone wasn't here when Mansell started, but he, he read that the, the petition that the mayor was having people sign. Right. And whatever the mayor may say at a meeting about, I am or I'm not for merger, you have that petition, and, it, and what does it say? It says, we the undersigned desire. Not we think we're thinking about, we might want you to consider. It says, we the undersigned desire the annexation of our municipality by the city of Cleveland. And he signed it. So if you sign that document, Right. And you're the mayor. You're saying that I desire. Right. I desire the annexation of the city by the city of Cleveland. Not I want to study. The Baldwin Wallace Community Research Institute did a study. That was grant funding. This, there was grant funding for the target area planning process study, Third Federal Bank, which I participated in. And plus the state. That was grant funding. You can do all kinds of studies with grant funding that don't put you along the road to merger. 
So this was a period, or annexation, excuse me, I broke my own rule. <laughs> We're not calling it merger, it's annexation takeover. But you know, but that's the thing. But they didn't do that. They put forward an annexation proposal and then signed it and then tried to deny that that's what they're for. You just gotta be you just gotta be careful how the message is worded. Uh, you ladies and gentlemen, and please and please, please, please read. Um, I want to reassure everybody again that there are individuals out here who are very much so against what is being portrayed, you know, and put out here uh, to the community. Um, you know, I was a member of the Shaw High School marching band. It would break my heart to see this marching band dissolve through uh, some type of political uh, regime. So. We have a band who's traveled to China. We have a band who was at, at the height had under Al, Dr. Alvin Fulton, had about 150, 175 people. It, it held strong into the 80s, dwindled a little bit in the 90s, hit rock bottom when I got there in 97. Uh, from 97, we built up and we had the first battle of the bands in 2001. And from 2001, the rest is history. You just kept seeing the the, the the upkeep and the upbringing of, of, of the Shaw High School marching band. And, you know, I'm not willing to let the history like that go. You know, many of us are Shaw High School graduates, if you can raise your hand, because I feel, feel as though half of the room has uh, matriculated through the East Cleveland Public School System. And if you have not matriculated through the East Cleveland Public School System, you still made your bed here in East Cleveland for a number of years. And that is appreciated. That is, a res is respected, and I think that's worth fighting for. Um, so I wanted to conclude before we open up the question and answer, and, and, and uh, did the precinct people have anything to say? Uh, do you have anything? Well, I got something to say, but... You want to wait till question and answer? Okay. Yeah. All right, for tomorrow, there is a council meeting tomorrow uh, at 6.30. On the agenda is uh, Resolution 16-15. Uh, authorizing the mayor to sell certain inoperable surplus vehicles. And then the next resolution was 17-15 uh, on the second reading, authorizing the mayor to sell inoperable, inoperable surplus vehicles uh, through scrap to scrap dealers. Uh, so there's there's various uh, pieces of legislation uh, on, on there. So please come out to the meeting tomorrow. And at that meeting, you can also uh, exercise your discourse about where the city is going if uh, the mayor is in attendance. Um, you, you can definitely uh, tell them how you feel through the public comment. All right, I can open up the floor briefly before we uh, eat the pieces before it gets stone cold. Uh, we, uh, so, so if you have something to say, please keep it within one minute. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Stevens. Um, I just wanted to say that. You know, we did the cleanup on Stan Stanwood two years ago. Um, and <coughs> under um, Director Brancatelli, through my harassment, I believe, um, finally they're supposed to fix Stanwood this summer. You mean pave it? Yeah, they, well, they got to do more than pave it. They got to take it down all the way down. go all the way down to the water piping. And all of that has, uh, has to be replaced. But and it's my also understanding, the yes, my understanding that the county has hired a subcontractor and they were out there in the fall mm -hmm. looking at it and they're supposed to start repaving it or they're supposed to start fixing it um, this summer, mm -hmm. which means that they there there's a possibility that they're going to have to do Grandview also because of the connection of the water line. With that. Um, in the meantime, we, we had a dumping problem up there also, and what we did was we made brick planters and placed them along where they were dumping, and if you come up Stanwood, you've probably seen the planters sitting there. Mm -hmm. And we put them there because they were pulling up and just dumping truckloads of stuff, yeah. and pretty much we have eradicated the dumping. Um, we're down now to an occasional tire here and there, which uh, we're going to probably collect and make into flower beds anyhow, and um, a few trees, tree branches, stuff like that, stuff that we can burn or cut up ourselves. Mm -hmm. But past that, the dumping has pretty much, that's pretty much stopped. Um, 
I wanted to, to make a mention about this Helen S. Brown Center closing. Um, I may not look like a senior, but I am a senior, okay? And I'm, I'm, I have a problem with the neighborhood center taking over the senior center because I believe that the seniors always need a place to go of their own and not in some church's basement. Right. Um, so, and, and I, you know, did some soul searching and things like that, but under this administration, it's difficult to get anything through. I wrote grants for the county for 27 years. And when I approached this administration about the grants that were available, when they came, when they walked in the door, I was told that they were going in another direction. My contention with this Helen S. Brown Center is, why haven't they looked at putting someone in there? They didn't want to pay the staff that was there. I'll go up there and volunteer and run the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's what I did for 27 years. I ran, I, I, I funded community-based neighborhood centers that um, had summer programming for children, for substance abuse, and for seniors and adults um, for that time period that I was here. Prior to that, I was a police officer in Youngstown, Ohio, and that's why I know about the things going on in Youngstown, because I'm down there periodically and my family is there, and I see all these new bridges and roads, but there ain't no people down there. <laughs> so, um, with that said, um, the other thing I wanted to speak to is the tax collection problem that we have here in East Cleveland. And, and I think if we just, if they get somebody just to focus on that mm -hmm. and work with the county on that, that a lot of that deficit money, it would be covered. If people would just pay, make people pay, pay their property tax. If you pay the tax, we'll be taking the property. We're going to sell it. Can, can I say, can I say add to that? If you, there's like a map that you can go to and it will actually show you where the tax delinquent properties are. And in this war, there aren't that many property delinquent. There's certain wars where it's concentrated, Hi, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, and then a lot of those property owners, you have to know, don't, are not, no one's living in those homes exactly. or they're bank owned. So the idea that like, it just seems like there's people who live in their community who live and pay taxes in certain areas and in certain areas there's a lot of delinquency but there's nothing done to take target the delinquency right yeah. you know but if you were to if you there you can look at a map and see you know that there are certain areas particularly like the Forest Hill area where it's like most if not all people are not tax delinquent so I just think that's important to recognize too that, that you know mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, and I figured it out after a while, while working <laughs> with the city's administration, I say that one more department dissolves, I think that there's, this is now the start of some type of uh, reorganization effort uh, for the city. And the one thing that you don't do is that you don't dissolve the revenue generating departments. Right. Um, I was fine with the health department. You know, and even vital statistics, we were, um, she wasn't paid that much, but she had a dual role at some point. She would work some of the day in finance, and then she would still do vital statistics. But vital statistics, we were still getting money from that. And so the county said, hey, just everybody just come down to the county and get your birth certificate, death record, whatever the case may be. But going back to the tax department, and it's, I'm glad that you brought this up. You know, we have a lot of businesses throughout the city that, have their family working in it, That's right. and they're getting paid under the table. Mm -hmm. And we had a tax enforcement officer, mm -hmm. tax enforcement officer goes out and asks that you produce documentation that yeah. we're garnering um, income tax from this individual that's standing behind this counter right. or working at this register. Right. And it, it'll allow more accountability for our government. You can't work in, in another city of small size and get away with that. You might can get away with it with Cleveland, you know, you can, you know, it's more spread out, but another city of equal size, you cannot get a, get away with something like that. And and going going on, on a, out on a limb at this point, I think that we do need to bring our tax department back for those positions. For those positions, we need to hire two part-time tax enforcement officers that go out here and chase these delinquent taxes. And that'd be their sole job. And, you know, and they'd be responsible for bringing in a certain amount of money every quarter. <laughs> and, yeah, that's right. Either you, you know, bring was, in money or you don't have a job. I was in Beachwood last week, 
and I went up there to buy a pair of sandals that I had seen. So I go up there to the register. When I get to the register, the lady tells me that the tax on the sandals is $10. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Wait a minute, honey, I can add better than that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to rip me off. She said, no. She said, there's a county tax. Beachwood has on the levy a 3% tax on anything that you purchase in their city, and the money goes directly to them. I said, I ain't coming back up here no more. <laughs> In, in certain cities, ladies and gentlemen, certain cities have learned how to finagle That's the system right. in order to get those revenues, That's just like right. with police citations. When we, you know, she and I are both police officers. Uh, you know, even at one point, East Cleveland was not getting the money for the traffic stops on certain sites because we were citing under the state code. And when you change it and start citing it under the city code, that means now that your money is coming to you. But why somebody didn't catch that early on only screams that you don't know municipal government. Exactly. You know, educate yourself to the processes of government, then you get up here and talk and think you know what you know. And, and so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm glad and I'm blessed to be versatile in, in what I do know. I've been in law enforcement, you know, worked in firefighting, volunteered in firefighting, you know, a, a background in business, background in education, and I'm just a, a die-hard citizen. Like, you know, I just want to work, and, you know, I don't need the pat on the back, don't need the affirmation. You just got to get out here and do the work. But we have to reinvent ourselves. We have to reinvent ourselves, and it starts with more investment into those, de those departments and roles within the city that, that, that generate revenue. Our, our, our inspectors, uh, Councilman Wooler and I were talking earlier about inspectors. At one point, he managed five inspectors. Yeah, and now we're down to one. Right. How is it that we can get money off of these citations and bringing these people into housing court because the front of their house, I didn't say the back of your house, I think the back of your house can fall apart all at once too. But from the curb, if I can see your issues from the curb, that means that we stand less likely chance of somebody moving into that neighborhood based on the way your house looks from the curb. That's right. But it, so, so, so we, we. And it's not always homeowners. And it's, it's a not. Lot of, it's, it's delinquent. It's del landlords. Landlords. Who, and, are, and I, who are getting money, who are profiting, who are generating income off of these properties in East Cleveland. So why not have someone who lives out in North Olmstead who's getting rich off of their property that they own in East Cleveland, why not have them pay a fine for not keeping their house in order? All you have to do is mm -hmm. sign a letter. And so th this is where we are with that, and I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. And we, we're going to have about three more questions and wrap it up. Uh, I know Mr. Bowman has something to say. But I wanted to address that. We're not tough on our landlords. We're not tough on, you know, I have no problem with, with you know, CMHA properties and things like that. We're not tough on those who, who, who have the CMHA vouchers in their landlords. You just can't have any old thing operating within your city. Landlords are just as important as the homeowner. They own that property. They have to take care of that property. They are responsible for the upkeep, the curb appeal. We have to do what is necessary as, as, as constituents of the city of East Cleveland and also elected leaders. If we're not doing our job, we're not effective. And so therein lies the issue. We need to invest more into our, our building and housing. And again, it's those positions that generate revenue. If you don't focus on those positions, we, we, we become null and void. There's an ongoing saying that Cleveland Heights built their their city hall off of traffic tickets and fines and things of that nature yeah. through their court. And I kind of, you know, it's an ongoing saying, but it is kind of true, you know, in, in so many uncertain terms that they did fund their, their upkeep of their city infrastructure through, through fines, fines and receipts and violations. You can't have a crack in Cleveland Heights. Well, if you can't have a crack in Cleveland Heights, and you know, don't come down here and think you can have a crack in a, in a building falling apart. Because there are some individuals that reside in Cleveland Heights, and they have property down here in East Cleveland, and you know you can't get away with it in Cleveland Heights, but you know you can t kind of get away with it in East Cleveland until you run across a councilman that does not like the way you're doing this. <laughs> Um, and, and there's one property where you just let the boards fall down and then you know that Cleveland Heights would have fined you $1,200. They would have hit you with the highest fine they could hit for a commercial property and you would have stopped it immediately. 
and they would have told you you got 48 hours to get it up. <laughs> Less than that. You know, we have to go back to the means and the, and, the, and, the, and the foundation of being aggressive towards our community. When, you, when some of you guys bought your house for the first time way back when, you couldn't spit wrong. You couldn't paint it wrong. You better not use the wrong color. You know, and, and you couldn't park on the street. You couldn't have loud music. Your kids better be on the porch at a certain time because of curfew. You know, we have to get back to the basics that make our community our community. Just because we're urban doesn't mean we have to settle for less. And that's where I end that at and go back to the next question. Um, just you know, take it back on what you said. You need good city management to do these things. And uh, we can sit here and talk all night about what <coughs> Cleveland Heights is doing, what East Cleveland is doing. But it all happens at the top. You gotta have the mayor, city manager's council to get behind um, eradicating all this stuff. Mr. Bowman, and that sir is the right question. And that's the right avenue, <laughs> and, and I and that's wisdom because it, it, councilman, what, am I right or wrong? Did we not discuss the uniformity of government? No. And what I mean by that, and also I want to mention that the last I think it was the last uh, meeting you gave. The councilman from county councilman was here, oh, yeah. and he said and here, that he, he was sick today. He, been today. he said that he would definitely pay north, north, northern part of uh, Nova. And every time I come through there with all those photos, northern Nova, I think about what he said. He said we're definitely going to have that paid. I don't know whether he remember that or not. stood right up at the meeting and said that that's one thing they wanted to do. And it, and it may be a motion for this fiscal calendar, so I don't, I, you know, like I said, I tried to talk to him earlier. Um, he, he's under he's under the weather as well. I, don't, I didn't have contact with him, so what I had didn't get passed on. Do you remember but him then, telling us? Yeah, this? but I do remember him saying saying Thank something you. about the county roads, including Shaw Avenue. Oh, he um, no. But he said no. But the other end of no, there was right. no reason why I didn't get paid with the rest of it. Right. Uh, so I'll follow up on that, and I'm glad you brought back brought that back to mention. But we're going back back to your initial statement. You know, and I don't want to pull on this because we. Did. It's cold. Um, it is cold. It is probably cold, but I got it the last minute, so it might be okay. You eat leftovers. Uh, we have to come into a, a decent cooperation with one another as as elected officials, and and, and you there has to some it, there has to be some change. And you know I'm not going to stand here and call for people's jobs or anything like that, but I can tell that some people's motives are impure. And when your motive is impure, there is no way on this side of God's green earth that you're going to fight for me. That's right. If I'm your family member and I don't like you and somebody just beats you up in front of the high and I didn't help, <laughs> that means that my motives towards your well-being is not pure. I want somebody to hurt you. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and at this point, we're, we're at a point where we have to do, again, what's necessary and there's no time for, for the mayor's office to slack. There's no time for the council to slack. There's no time for the judges to slack. You know, I told Judge Dawson, I said, man, you know, with all due respect, I respect the way you run your court. I said, but well, stop throwing out everything. I said, we need to hold firm to what we, what, what we deal with in this city, and we need to make our presence known. I said, you know, yeah, at some point, you, you got to think, stop thinking about being elected and start thinking about what's right. You hit somebody in their pocket, they'll stop doing it. They stopped doing. So, 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 what I mean by uniformity of government, collectively, we have to come together. Collectively, we have to be at the same table talking about development. Collectively, we have to come together and talk about renegotiating our debt. Collectively, we have to talk about how, how it is we reshape our community. Our community has to take on a different preface. You know, my degree, one of, you know, my, my study in college was partly marketing. We have to make our, make sure that our our outlook, as it relates to other communities, to look on the inside, look look from the outside looking in. 
we have to develop a different marketing strategy, our gateways. We have to address our gateways. We have to, you know, pull, we can pull cases. It's nothing wrong with integrating our community. I'm not speaking of gentrification because there's some African Americans down there at case that we can get to come and move into our community. I'm not saying when we talk about case, just don't think the case is just all minutely just dealing with the Caucasian people and, and Asian. We're dealing with uh, some of our, our, our own that work down She works down there. We want to move individuals with tax-based money down into our community, but I noticed that Euclid Avenue doesn't have any thoroughfare for bikes. So we have to, again, other, other people are moving into certain communities because of, because of the amenities and how it is that, that it is community friendly. You get what I'm saying? If, 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 I, if I tore down a house on Euclid Avenue, I need to make sure that temporarily we do something with the usage of that land so that it doesn't look unsightly. Plant some flowers, take those stakes up out of the ground and make, stop looking abandoned and, and desolate and make use for it. You get what I'm saying? You have to, you have to achieve a goal that, that requires you to reinvent what it is your community looks like. All right, Mr. Bowman, uh, thank you for, for, for that. Um, and I will uh, text the councilman tonight about what his, stat, what his status is. And, and, and in cooperation with that, I wanted you guys to be aware that, that we all voted, and major, well, the majority voted in Cuyahoga County for this uh, casino to operate within, or the casino tax to operate within a community, the community. That money was promised. <laughs> To the entering suburbs as well. Do we get that much? When we voted for that, the, the money was promised to the entering <laughs> suburbs as well as the city, the, the, the county, and the city of Cleveland. However, it's being funneled to the city of Cleveland and the county. None of the adjacent suburbs got any of that money, and we were promised that type of money. So that's another conversation that I need to uh, have with that individual because that's the way they got us to vote for it is that we would see some of that money. More trickery. Yeah, we're tired of the trickery. We thought we changed government and yet they, you know, you change government and they reinvent themselves. Any more questions before we adjourn? Anything else? Well, I thank you guys for attending the War for Community meeting. The next meeting will be the beginning of May. Uh, that information will either be received by call, by, by, uh, by letter, or by handout. All right, enjoy the peace over there, you guys. Thank you for attending.